The morning sun, a shy maiden peeking over the horizon, cast a golden glow on the village of Vinod. Birdsong filled the air, a joyous chorus celebrating the day's arrival. Maya, a twelve-year-old girl with eyes the color of deep brown pools and a braid as black as a raven's wing, stirred in her futon. Excitement thrummed through her veins, chasing away sleep like a mischievous child banishing shadows. This wasn't just any ordinary day, for today, Maya embarked on a journey that filled her heart with a mixture of trepidation and thrill, a solo train ride to bustling Kyoto, where her beloved Aunt Hannah resided. Aunt Hannah, with her tales of ancient temples and vibrant festivals, was a mythical figure in Maya's eyes. Kyoto, a distant city bathed in stories of geishas and cherry blossoms, held an almost magical allure. The prospect of finally meeting her aunt and experiencing the wonders of Kyoto had kept Maya awake for nights, dreaming of adventures yet to unfold. After a frantic breakfast, where rice balls went mostly uneaten, Maya and her father, Taro, set off for the train station. The midday sun blazed down, turning the dusty road into a shimmering river of heat. Despite the scorching weather, Maya's heart danced a jig. Every step closer to the station was a step closer to her dream. Hinode, nestled amidst rolling rice paddies and verdant hills, was a familiar comfort zone. The train station, however, was a different beast altogether. Its brick facade and bustling platform with arriving and departing trains overwhelmed Maya with a sense of nervous excitement. The cacophony of announcements, the rhythmic rumble of trains, and the hurried movements of passengers were a stark contrast to the quiet serenity of her village life. Taro, sensing his daughter's apprehension, knelt beside her. His weathered hands, strong and calloused from years of work in the fields, held a warmth that calmed Maya's fluttering heart. Remember, Maya-chan, he said, his voice raspy but gentle, be polite and careful. Don't talk to strangers and stay by Aunt Hannah's side once you reach Kyoto. He handed her a small embroidered pouch, its worn fabric testament to years of love and care. It held her train ticket, a few emergency coins, and a lucky charm, a smooth, onyx pebble taro had found by the river when Maya was just a baby. As he tucked the pouch safely inside her kimono, his eyes held a mixture of pride and concern. With a final hug that held unspoken words of love and worry, Taro bid farewell. Maya stood alone, clutching the pouch against her heart, a lone bird about to take flight. The approaching train, a sleek behemoth belching steam, pierced the air with its whistle. A nervous lump formed in Maya's throat, but as she boarded the train, a determined glint lit up her eyes. Inside the train, a sense of calm washed over Maya. She found a seat by the window, the familiar rhythm of the wheels clicking on the tracks acting as a lullaby. The countryside unfolded outside, a tapestry of vibrant green rice fields dotted with quaint villages and serene temples nestled amidst the rolling hills. Bamboo forests, their tall stalks swaying gently in the breeze, added a touch of mystery to the landscape. 
Hours melted away as Maya devoured a bento box her mother had packed with loving care. The delicious aroma of rice, pickled vegetables, and grilled fish filled the air, momentarily banishing the gnawing worry that tugged at her heart. She then delved into a book of traditional Japanese folk tales, fantasizing about mischievous kitsun, fox spirits, and brave samurai warriors. As the afternoon sun began its descent, painting the sky with hues of orange and purple, Maya succumbed to exhaustion. The gentle rocking of the train lulled her into a peaceful sleep. Vivid dreams of soaring cherry blossoms and kimono-clad figures filled her slumber, a prelude to the adventure that awaited. The rhythmic clatter of the train wheels abruptly jolted Maya awake. Disoriented, she blinked away the remnants of sleep. The familiar landscape outside the window had vanished replaced by a cityscape of imposing buildings and sprawling streets teeming with people. Panic, cold and sharp, gripped her heart. A quick glance confirmed her worst fear, she was alone. Aunt Hannah was nowhere to be seen. With a trembling voice, Maya called out for her aunt but the only response was the indifferent rumble of the train pulling into a bustling station. Just then, a tall man with a disarming smile approached her. His eyes, however, held a glint that sent shivers down Maya's spine. Remembering her father's warning, she clamped her mouth shut, her heart hammering against her ribs like a trapped bird. Lost, little one? The man asked. 